And we are sitting here with Stephen Meadows talking about networking. Meet more, make more. So he got this book. It's a great book. And I don't like to read. <laughs> and we were talking about it off air. People don't read these days anyways. You know, we were talking about different posts you see on Facebook and John Michaels. We were all sitting there talking about people don't read. I don't like to read. That's why I love Twitter. Um, but I tell you what, the book, uh, it's real easy to read. And, and I do like it. And there's some great tips because I'm in sales and always networking. And people are always asking for assistance and, you know, vice versa. So it's great for if you know somebody in sales, realtors, business owners, anybody, check it out. Meet more, make more. Uh, so you've got the book. You're doing the book tour. Have you laid it around, sitting at home, relax, take a deep breath and say, wow, I should have put this chapter in there. What's, what's one thing that, that after you've done it that you could have said, because I'm all about continuous improvement, whether it's your business or not. You sit back and say, I should have added that. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> most authors, I don't, know, well, I don't know if most authors feel this way or not, but I, I actually, before I even finished the book, I already made plans for a second edition. Uh, because I, I'm continuing to blog. I mean, so the book, I, I, could, I could have, right before I published it, I could have added 40 or 50 more pages of content. Uh, so I, I, don't, I can't say that I have, like, one regret, like, I wish I would have, but I, you know, going through it, it's like, as I'm explaining it to people, it's like, oh, now that would have been, you know, I, I hear little things like, like the garden analogy I used earlier. I wish I would have thought of that earlier so I could put that in the book. It's definitely going in the second edition. I think it's a great analogy for people. Growing your network. Yeah, exactly. There uh, you go. So how to garden your network right there. Yeah. So I think that's, that's my, my big thing is it's just fun now to, uh, I don't see it as a regret. I see it as a fun sort of like, oh, I need to add that. Oh, I have to add that. Um, but you know, there's definitely there's definitely little parts of the book where I'm like, you know, I I feel like next time I can make that a little bit better, and I'm looking forward to hearing feedback from people. I'm encouraging feedback, like you know, write reviews, give me give me criticism. I want to know what worked for you, what didn't work. If something, you know, if I get like five or six people tell me, you know, I didn't, I tried this and it didn't work, or I didn't understand what you're trying to say, well then I'll know to take it out of the second edition. You know, like well, right. you know what, you're right. From your perspective, I guess it doesn't make sense. You know, that's a good point. You know, it's not the it's not the end all be all of networking books. It's just from my personal perspective and I've had some success in my life, so I'd like to think I have a little bit to say about it, but uh, I, I'm really interested to know what other people think about it. You know, I, I'm really I love the, the positive and negative feedback, um, but I, I prefer constructive criticism. You know, let me know why you didn't like something or what you want to see more of and then I can improve on it. I've met many business owners that know a lot about the product they're selling. Um, they do a great job uh, from the business standpoint. Problem is, uh, they're introverted. They don't really like <clears throat> that interaction with people. They, they have um, people that work for them or people that maybe they market for them or public relations. What are some tips out there? Because I know there's a lot more business owners out there that are intimidated by that. What are a couple of tips that you would suggest to help those business owners? Maybe not to get over it. I mean, that's something that's that you know your tips aren't going to change somebody's you know character makeup. But what are some tips that they can do um, to still kind of meet more, make more without necessarily doing it themselves? Well, you know, uh, there's there's probably something they're passionate about. I mean, everybody has a passion. Everybody has something they really enjoy, a hobby even. You know, maybe they're an avid fisherman or they love golf or bowling or whatever. You know, meet people through there. They're on your level. You're, you're relaxed. You're doing what you enjoy. It's still a great way to meet people no matter what your business is. But you know what? Like you said, they might have marketing people that work for them. There's nothing wrong with hiring someone to do your networking for you. For your business. I mean, you still, as the business owner, represent the business. You're the face, you're the public face of the business. But follow your passion. You know, go, go with what makes you happy, and, and people will follow you. I say the same thing about Facebook. Facebook, and, you know, so use social media about what you're passionate about. I, I can't tell you how many times I hear, well, I don't know how to use social media, or I don't understand, da, da, da. Well, then don't. I mean, don't, don't force it. You right. know, if you're not comfortable with something, if you don't like going to mixers, don't go to mixers. <clears throat> if you don't, if you don't like drinking, don't drink. There are ways around that without having to feel left out, ostracized, or that pe people, you know, might feel like you're judging them because you don't have a drink in your hand at a mixer. 
I talk about that in the book, how there's, there's ways around that. So don't ever try to force any, anything like that. Just be yourself, be natural. There are many other people like you. Well, no the, the more comfortable you are, uh, the easier it is and the more approachable you are yes. for other people to come up. Yes. Um, a lot of times somebody is just that eye contact. The main thing is a, is a smile. And make that eye contact, even if it's just a head nod, because you kind of open that window for somebody to say, hey, I'm so-and-so, what do you do? Uh, right. And that kind of gets the ball rolling to, like, your, your three mental keys to right. say, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do, this is where I work, this is what I own, uh, mm -hmm. and, and make sure you're covering that. Here's my card. Tell me about you. What do you do? You know? Right. Um, and so, and one of the things I've always learned is, you know, ask, how can I help you? You know, what's something that uh, you're looking at or, you know, are you new? Because um, <clears throat> one of the times it's funny is if you don't go to those events, you never know who's new, who's not new. So you kind of you, you kind of just have to keep it open and right. just keep an open mind because it may be your first time there, but, you know, you've got somebody there that has been 100 times and you have somebody there that's new. Uh, and so you never know the situation you're going to well, run a, in. A great question <clears throat> that you can ask someone at a excuse me. <clears throat> a great question you can ask someone at a as a business event is what brings you here? Not even what do you do, but why are you here? Like what what brought you to this event? You'll be really surprised at the answers you could get. I mean, they might they might tell you exactly what they're looking for. You know, I'm really I'm here to meet. You know, I'm here to meet realtors, or I'm here to meet. You know, I trying to find people that are in this industry oh well you know i know uh, joe over there in the corner da, da, da. you know you never know what kind of response you could get with that question and then who knows you can be helpful to that person without even realizing it uh you mentioned in a couple of tips uh don't monopolize the host uh working the room uh how do you work how do you work the room what's some good tips about it to where you don't seem like it's a speed dating thing uh to where you're you're not interested hey i'm so and so oh nice to meet you when do you know the cutoff? You know, it's it's basically in the flow of the conversation. I mean, a lot of times it comes naturally. Um, so if you get a lull, take it back. Right. right. Get out if, of there. If you both have basically said what you want to say and just kind of your eyes, you can tell the other person their eyes start kind of darting around, looking at other people or, you know, I, try to be the first one to cut it off. Don't, you know, you don't want them to walk away from you. You want to be able to be like, well, okay, well, I'll let you, I'll let you get back to your drink or your, you know, appetizer or whatever. I'm going to. I'm going to check out. i got to go say hi to somebody over here. It was great meeting you. You know, that's a good way to kind of end it. But you, you'll, you'll catch their body language. You know, they'll start leaning away from you or their eyes will start shifting. They're, they're done. They're finished talking to you. Just end it. Sometimes you can tell who the new guy is, too. Uh, and, and so one of the things you can do to help grow your network and kind of build that relationship right off is, you know, kind of lead them around a little bit, introduce them, kind of get the ball rolling, make them feel comfortable and move on. Because uh, there's, there's one thing is when you're in a group of people and you're new, you're new to a business, you're new to a networking group, it's rough to be that odd person out. Yes. Uh, it's very intimidating, and they may not come back, and that may be your, one of your best clients. But uh, I appreciate you coming on. It's been a great uh, – it's something I'm passionate about. I love networking. I love talking, uh, obviously. But uh, it's meet more, make more. You can get on Amazon for $8.99. Uh, definitely a return on investment if you're in the business of talking to people. Uh, meet more, make more, turn your network into net worth. Check it out. Stephen J. Meadows, forewarned by Tim Davis. Give him a shout out. S Stephen, I appreciate you coming on. You got uh, tomorrow at F and M Bank. Yes. Uh, if you if you are you're everyone is welcome to come. If you're in business, I would love to I'd love to meet you. F and M Bank, fifty Franklin Street, downtown. It's their Franklin room, reception room at the top from six to eight. I would love you to come by. Check it out and check out his book and also check out the coupon mint summer edition it's all over clarksville hopkinsville fort campbell christian way farms get you uh play golf for free with uh buy one get one uh that's pretty much it for it uh again tune in next week david tiller it's going to be an interesting show i promise it you. it will be <laughs> it's going to be a great it always show. is yeah it, 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 well you, you never know what's going to happen but you never know he's going to say you exactly hit that right but uh we appreciate you listening. Thank you to all our sponsors, Keystone Really Property Management, SWBC Mortgage, Jody's Cabinets, Coupon Mint, Culligan Water. Thank you again to Stephen Meadows. Get his book on Amazon. But most of all, thank you for joining, spending your lunch hour with us. Uh, it's been great. Tune in. Give David support. Give him a call. Uh, but you know what's funny is most business decisions occur over lunch and dinner. 
uh, than any other time of the day, yet there's no MBA courses on the subject. Go figure. You listen to Mind Your Business. Until we return in two weeks, we'll talk to you.